All right, I thought in this video, uh, we'll take a look at this article that was a uh, recently leaked Google um, document um, written by someone at Google. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's take a look at it. The title is Google, we have no moat and neither does OpenAI. I've actually not seen this. I'm not familiar with this word moat, uh, so I had to Google it. And uh, I don't know, it says like moat is the latest jargon encircling Sir Silicon Valley. It's basically this thing, right? When they have uh, basically protection from external threats and so on. Uh, so like Google is uh, afraid of something. So let's uh, try to figure out what they're afraid of. Uh, we have no moat and neither does OpenAI. We've done a lot of looking over our shoulders at OpenAI. Who will cross the next milestone? What will the next move be? So, you know, all of these companies are now like in super high like competition against each other. OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google, I guess, are the top. And then you have Amazon right there as well with like, which toilet paper do you want to buy this week? <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, those are like the four, I guess. Uh, but the uncomfortable truth is we aren't positioned and nvidia nvidia as well we can't forget them but the uncomfortable truth is we aren't positioned to win this arms race and neither is open ai while we've been squabbling a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch no free lunch i'm talking of course about open source plainly put they are lapping us things we consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today just to name a few uh, large language models on phone, uh, scalable personal AI. Uh, you can fine tune a personal AI on your laptop in an evening. Responsible release. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what that is. There are entire websites full of art models with no restriction whatsoever, and tech is not far behind. Multimodality. The current multimodal science QA state of the art was trained in an hour. While our models still hold a slight edge in terms of quality, the gap is closing astonishingly quickly. Open source models are faster, more customizable, more private, and pound for pound more capable. They are doing things with $100 and 13 billion parameters that we struggle with uh, at 10 million and 540 billion. And they are doing so in weeks, not in months. This has profound implications for us. You know, this is honestly like I'm happy to read this. Uh, this makes me happy because this means that the machine learning community is doing something correct. Uh, sort of open AI was created to do exactly this. This is uh, what the principles were behind uh, that by having it open, by having everybody be able to uh, cope with it, we uh, avoid being you know controlled by a specific company that has all this power. Uh, now, there's been a discussion around that, right? OpenAI has changed their uh, approach on that, and they view that it's too dangerous to uh, develop it uh, sort of openly. Uh, so they should definitely change their name. We've already established that. But, uh, you know, it's a difficult case, right? Because there are so many incentives for them not to do it, um, you know, as a company. So it's hard to trust their actual principles on that. And, uh, yeah, so... To me, it seems like open AI is with, with, a, with a space in between open AI. Uh, that is actually the way forward, I hope. I mean, it's more exciting anyways uh, to be able to actually play around with these things. And so reading that they're afraid of this is like, it's a good feeling, you know, we're doing something right. We have no secret sauce. Our best hope is to learn from and collaborate with what others are doing outside of Google. Uh, people will not pay for a restricted model when free unrestricted alternatives are compa comparable in quality and we should consider where our value add really is giant models are slowing us down in the long run the best models are the ones which can be iterated upon quickly we should make small variants more than an afterthought now that we know what is possible in the less than 20 billion parameter regime so yeah like uh, yeah this is in true, like general, generally true too. Where uh, I oftentimes make the the problem of scaling up because there is an uh, improvement you can make when scaling up, but at the cost of having uh, slower iteration time, it's not worth it in the long term because there are so many ideas you can explore that will 
bring us a more substantial benefit than just increasing the parameters. Like increasing the parameters is a dumb way of improving your model or performance generally. Uh, if there are, you know, in many cases, there are more fundamental things we are missing, more bigger ideas that can improve it in a better way. So what happened? At the beginning of March, the open source community got their hands on their first really capable model. Llama was leaked to the public. It had no instructional conversation tuning and no reinforcement learning uh, human feedback. Nonetheless, the community immediately understood the significance of what they had been given. A tremendous outpouring of innovation followed, which is days between major developments. Here we are barely a month later and there are variants with instruction tuning, quantization, quality improvement, human evals, multimodality, I guess that is with GPT-4 maybe, RLHF, etc., many of which build upon each other. Most importantly, uh, they have solved the scaling problem to the extent that anyone can tinker. Many of the new ideas are from ordinary people. <laughs> what? What does that mean? Wait, so said, anyone can tinker. Many of the new ideas are from ordinary people. Okay. The barrier to entry for training and experiment experimentation has dropped from the total output of a major research organization to one person, an evening, and a beefy laptop. Hmm. I mean, this is uh, cool. So what is this? Uh, what are they actually wanting to do then? I'm curious. Uh, so, I mean, let's skip that. What we missed. Yeah, so Laura, uh, Laura works by representing model updates as a low rank factorizations, which reduces the size of the update matrices by a factor of several thousands. Uh, this allows model fine tuning at a fraction of the cost and time. Yeah, so we mean like real innovation of training these models. Uh, retraining models from scratch is the hard path. Large models aren't more capable in the long run if we can iterate on faster on small models. Yeah, so this is a uh, interesting data quality scales better than data size. Directly competing with open source is a losing proposition. So who would pay for a Google product with usage restrictions if there is a free high quality alternative without them? That, I mean, that's true. And we, we should not expect to be able to catch up. The modern internet runs on an open source, runs on open source for a reason. Open source has some significant advantages that we cannot replicate. We need them more than they need us. I think that's uh, we still need them, right? Because uh, it wouldn't be possible to have a uh, llama uh, wait if uh, Meta didn't release them. And even, you know, looking beyond that on how we got the instruction data, we used GPT-4, which is available, available to us from OpenAI. So to me, it seems like we need each other. And uh, if we uh, find better ways to collaborate. I think that will be the solution to me where, um, yeah, not exactly sure how you make that into a actual business value proposition thing, right? But fundamentally we need each other. Uh, open source uh, needs these, uh, the resources that these big companies have so they can leverage that and uh, they need us for ideas uh and uh experimentation so to me it seems like we can have a win-win relationship uh with uh you know between open source and, and these big companies keeping our technology secrets was always a tenuous proposition google researchers are leaving for other companies on a regular cadence so we can assume they know everything we know and we will continue to for as long as that pipeline is open but holding on to a competitive advantage in technology becomes even harder now that cutting edge research in LLMs is affordable. Research institutions all over the world are building on each other's work, exploring the solution space in a breadth first way that far outstrips our own capacity. We can try to hold tightly to our secrets while outside innovation dilute their value, or we can try to learn from each other. I mean, that's, uh, that's, I think that's right. We should try to do that. Individuals are not constrained by licenses to the same degree as corporations. Much of this innovation is happening on top of the leaked model weights from Meta. 
While this will inevitably change as truly open models get better, the point is that they don't have to wait. The legal cover afforded by personal use and the impracticality of prosecuting individuals means that individuals are getting access to these technologies while they are hot. Uh, okay. All right, so what are they saying? Owning the ecosystem, letting open source work for us. Paradoxically, the one clear winner in all of this is Meta. Because the leak model was theirs, they have effectively guarded an entire planet's worth of free labor. Free labor. Since most open source innovation is happening on top of their architecture, there's nothing stopping them from directly incorporating it into their products. Yeah, I think that's exactly how you uh, set up the win-win. I mean, we can generate, the open source community can generate ideas, uh, play around with the model, see where their flaws are and how they can improve. And that leads to a better outcome for the big company that has the product uh, where uh, they can m incorporate that into their product and deliver a really good product. Uh, I don't see uh, I don't see how that is actually the issue. So can you uh, also do as meta like release everything for us because the pretty much all the LLMs you have uh, released have been closed, right? So uh, it would be nice to get that and be able to uh, do free labor for you. The value of owning the ecosystem cannot be overstated. Google itself has successfully used this paradigm in its open source offerings like Chrome and Android. By owning the platform where innovation happens, Google cements itself as a thought leader and a direction setter, earning the ability to shape the narrative on ideas that are larger than itself. The more tightly we control our models, the more attractive we make open alternatives. Google and OpenAI have both gravitated defensively towards release patterns that allow them to retain tight controls over how their models are used. But this control is a fiction. Anyone seeking to use LLMs for unsanctioned purposes can simply take their pick of their freely available models. Google should establish itself a leader in the open source community, taking the lead by cooperating with rather than ignoring the broad, this broader conversation. This problem means taking some uncomfortable steps like publishing the model weights for small ULM variants. This necessarily means relinquishing some control over our models, but this compromise is inevitable. We cannot hope to both drive innovation and control it. I actually really like this, uh, this idea here. Uh, uh, you know, this uh, idea that they're bringing forth that they can't control... Uh, yeah, that, I mean, it's exactly right. You need to open up and allow people to play with it, to to do what they want. And then uh, you win by improving the product. You you win by having ideas. The problem is like you can't. The problem would be if they would have really re restrictive licenses on these things. Uh, and that would really rub off the wrong way on the open source community. I think the only way to win is by uh, both sides feeling good uh, and uh, feeling good is uh, releasing the weights and making it uh, allow people to play with it and don't uh, be defensive about sort of be, sort of don't be afraid of losing control when the end result is innovation because uh, uh, then you're sort of putting your profit and your uh, leadership position basically on top of the development and improvement of the things we're doing. So what about OpenAI? Uh, yeah. All right. It's the same thing for them. What happened? Llama. Llama is leaked. Language models on a toaster. Fine tuning on a, lap a laptop with the alpaca. Um, now it's fast with 4-bit quantization. A 13 billion model achieves parity with BARD. Choose your own model, open source GPT-3. Uh, okay, I didn't miss that one probably. Multi-model training in an hour. Real humans can't tell the difference between a 13 billion model and ChatGPT. Open source RLHF at ChatGPT levels. Open assistant, okay. And um, all right, so there you go. That's the article on uh, Google. We have no moat and neither does OpenAI. Uh, it'll be interesting to follow this in the future and see what happens. Uh, you know, um, this is exciting for 
machine learning community and uh i think generally open source that you know we're able to people are able to compete at a at that kind of a level against these companies because we are cooperating with each other that's the nature and the way forward right this is the way all right that's it for this video take care guys